All right, hi everybody. So we are going to continue working with uh, Colab notebooks. Um, so we had just gotten a little introduction into what Colab and Python and LaTeX are and how we might be using them this semester. Um, so here we're still working with the same Colab notebook um, that I linked that I have a link to in the description of this video. So if you want to open up the notebook that we're looking at right now, um, you can click on the link uh, provided in the description of this video. And so here we've got a Colab notebook. And if you open it up, you might open up over here and just keep in mind that we've gone through the first little bit and now we're over here. And so the first thing to keep in mind is the Colab notebook that you're looking at right now. This is a notebook that I have created and it's a shared notebook. So that means um, you can view it, but you do not have permission to make any changes to this document. And as you're working on assignments this semester, you're certainly going to want to make changes to documents and save your own versions of those files. So when you open up an assignment that, or any sort of Colab notebook that you want to ed edit and save your own personal copy, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is click the copy to drive button, which for most people is going to be located right over here, where on my screen it says all changes saved. Um, I actually do have permission to edit this, so that's why I don't see that button. Um, but your version, you probably have a plus code button over here, a plus text button, and then you've got this copy to drive button. So you would wanna click that button to create a copy of your own version of this notebook. Um, and then you can go ahead and edit and make any changes to your own notebook as you like. Um, but when you make that change, the notebook that you create is probably um, going to be called something like copy, uh, getting started, collab, notebook, Python, et cetera. Um, and so if you want to get rid of or change the name, you can just double click on the name of the document up here. And if you want to move the document to some other location in your drive, then you can come to the file menu and move it around to some other location in your drive. Um, so in this sense, the file menu here works just similar to the file menu uh, on most other applications that you probably are um, familiar working with. Okay, and so as I'm working with this document, um, Google Colab does have an auto save feature, which is great. It saves things very frequently. And kind of up here next to where the plus text box is, you see a running dialogue. It'll tell you that all of your changes have been saved and so on. Um, so there is an autosave. Once you've got your own version of the notebook, you can see it says saving over here. Um, all changes have been saved. But again, you can't start making or saving changes until you've created your own copy of this notebook. And if you want to be really sure that you're saving your work before you close a document, it doesn't help to just click the save button before you close a web browser. Okay, so now we've talked about how to take a document that's already exists, copy it so that you now have your own version to edit. Um, and as you're kind of moving around a Colab notebook, there are two types of cells in a Colab notebook. There are text cells, which are mainly the cells that we've been looking at so far. So these are cells where you can look at text. Um, and as part of that text, we can enter mathematical formulas using LaTeX. And there are code cells that can be used to run code. So if I double click on any cell, uh, on a text cell, excuse me, it's going to activate that text cell. And then I get a menu up top for kind of some formatting options. Um, but I can kind of see two versions of the text. On the left side, I have the kind of raw unrendered text. And on the right, I have the formatted rendered text. So I can make changes in the text cell, and then I can see those changes get reflected over here on the right. And then when I'm done making any changes to a text cell that I want to, I can just hit um, the shift and return or enter key, and that will take me out of that text cell. So double clicking activates a text cell. You can make any changes that you want, and then you can shift and return, and that will exit you out of the text cell. Um, there are also code cells, and that's what this is um, over here. And so code cells are where we can run. In this case, we're going to be running Python code. We can edit and run code cells. So over here, if I want to run the code cell, I can either 
hit the little play button that's on the left side of the code cell, or I can hit shift and the return or enter key, and that's gonna run that code. So um, this first line of code might take, um, you might think this is taking a long time to run. It was just initializing and setting up my connection. Now I've got a connection. And so if I wanted to calculate this again, you can see it takes less than a second to calculate this product. Um, and so these are cells that I've already created and added to this notebook. Um, if you want to move the cells around, if you want to delete the cells, you can see there's a little um, browser, there's a little button menu in the upper right corner of each cell for me to do different things. Um, if I want to add a new cell um, at the border of each cell, there's a little button to add a text uh, cell like this or to add a code cell over here. So as I'm navigating through my document, if I ever want to add a text or a code cell, um, I can just hover over the border of a cell and, and insert a new text or code cell at that point. Uh, okay, and then the last thing I want to mention in this video before we start to work with some matrices in Python um, is just to help navigate around these documents. Uh, there is a table of contents option. So if you see here on the left, there's a button to click on table of contents. Um, and I've set up headers in this document so it helps you can jump around um, in this way along the document. Uh, you can close the table of contents like that. Um, you can search and replace things if you want to in your document with the magnifying glass over here. And there's also um, little arrows to collapse and expand sections. So once I've covered the entire section about getting started with Google Colab, I can close that section out and it collapsed all of those um, subsections. And since here we've just finished talking about how to work with Colab notebooks, I can close this um, and that collapsed that section down. And now we're ready to start working with matrices um, using Python, using the SymPy package in Python. Um, so I'll stop this video here and uh, the next video is gonna continue um, working with matrices using the SymPy package.